Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I started off the week talking about the challenges that lie ahead, and I want to finish the week just by reiterating what you've heard. Uh, mitigation works. It definitively and quantitatively is working, and I want to say thank you to America for your efforts to help flatten the curve and to save lives. Uh, but at the President's direction, yesterday I met with 2,000 uh, Hispanic leaders from uh, their communities, and today the Vice President led a phone call that I was on with hundreds of African American leaders, including the Reverend Jesse Jackson, including Derek Johnson of the NAACP, including the National Medical Association and the Black Nurses Association, to talk about some of the alarming trends we're observing regarding the impact of COVID-19 on communities of color. And you've heard the stats in New York City. Uh, Hispanics uh, represent the majority of deaths. In Milwaukee County, blacks are 25% of the population, but almost 50% of the cases and 75% of the deaths. Uh, so what's going on? Well, it's alarming, but it's not surprising that people of color have a greater burden of chronic health conditions. African Americans and Native Americans, <clears throat> excuse me, develop high blood pressure at much younger ages. It's less likely to be under control and does greater harm to their organs. Puerto Ricans have higher rates of asthma, and black boys are three times as likely to die of asthma as their white counterparts. As a matter of fact, I've been carrying around an inhaler in my pocket for 40 years out of fear of having a fatal asthma attack. And I hope that showing you this inhaler shows little kids with asthma all across the country that they can grow up to be Surgeon General one day. But I more immediately share it so that everyone knows it doesn't matter if you look fit, if you look young, you are still at risk for getting and spreading and dying from coronavirus. The chronic burden of medical ills is likely to make people of color, especially, less resilient to the ravages of COVID-19, and is possibly, in fact, likely uh, that the burden of social ills is also contributing. Social distancing and teleworking we know are critical, and you've heard Dr. Brooks and Dr. Fauci talk about how they prevent the spread of coronavirus, yet only one in five African Americans and one in six Hispanics has a job that lets them work from home. People of color are more likely to live in densely packed areas and in multi-generational housing which, situations which create higher risk for spread of a highly contagious disease like COVID-19. We tell people to wash their hands, but a study showed 30% of the homes on Navajo Nation don't have running water. So how are they going to do that? In summary, people of color experience uh, both more likely exposure to COVID-19 and increased complications from it. But let me be crystal clear. We do not think people of color are biologically or genetically predisposed to get COVID-19. There is nothing inherently wrong with you. But they are socially predisposed to coronavirus exposure and to have a higher incidence of the very diseases that put you at risk for severe complications of coronavirus. But as the Vice President shared on the call this morning, this history, and I want you to hear me say this, it does not have to be our nation's future. We're taking steps now in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic to reach protect and strengthen all communities impacted by this disease, and especially our communities of color. More details will be forthcoming, but we are actively working as uh, the Vice President and the CDC Director laid out today. Data collection, targeted outreach to communities of color, and increasing financial, employment, education, housing, social, and health supports so that everybody has an equal chance to be healthy. And I want to close by saying that while your state and local health departments and those of us in public service are working day and night to help stop the spread of COVID-19 and to protect you regardless of your color, your creed, or your geography, I need you to know you are not helpless. And it's even more important that in communities of color, we adhere to the task force guidelines to slow the spread. Stay at home if possible. If you must go out, maintain six feet of distance between you and everyone else, and wear a mask if you're going to be within six feet of others. Wash your hands more often than you ever dreamed possible. Avoid alcohol, tobacco, and drugs. And call your friends and family, check in on your mother. She wants to hear from you right now. And speaking of mothers, we need you to do this, if not for yourself, then for your abuela. Do it for your granddaddy. Do it for your big mama. Do it for your pop pop. We need you to understand, especially in communities of color, we need you to step up and help stop the spread so that we can protect those who are most vulnerable. This epidemic is a tragedy, but it will be all the more tragic if we fail to recognize and address the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 and an array of other diseases and risk factors on communities of color. 
The task force in this administration are determined not to let that happen. The president, the vice president, has said we will not let that happen. We can't fix these issues overnight, but I promise you we will work with your communities to quickly and meaningfully move the needle in the right direction. Nothing less than the fate of our families and friends, my family and friends, depends on it.